Hey, what's up, guys? So we've got another failure, a big fail, due to these cheap, crappy Chinese power supplies. This one really, really pissed me off because... So now let me rewind a little bit here. So yesterday I'm working on a very high priority, uh, very tense project. You know, I was testing a lot of things going on. It was uh, actually for an automotive application. And uh, I needed to power a board from 12 volt supply, right? And uh, I picked up one of these really cheap power supplies just to do that. So we've got um, an input voltage, it's you know, AC input, somewhat universal, uh, 12 volts DC at three amps on the output. Okay, so fine, no big deal, looks nice. Uh, yesterday I'm working with this supply and I've got this board and it's kind of doing its own thing and uh, sure enough you know you get 12 volts at the output of this barrel jack uh, everything works great but you know I'm testing this board out it's working fine uh, but it's got some switches to the you know going to the inputs of this board and every time I would go over to flip the switch you know meanwhile my other hands doing something else so I'd reach over and I'd flip the switch and I'd feel like a little sting when I'd flip the switch. And uh, the first thing I thought this was, was, you know, maybe there's like some solder burr on the back side of the switches or something like that. So, you know, I didn't even think about it because, you know, I'm in the middle of like testing a lot of stuff and I'm keeping, you know, my eyes are on one screen. I'm flipping the switch over here. I'm watching that. I've got all the equipment set up. Didn't even think about it. So this happened like a hundred times in a row, you know, I'm like, God, I keep hitting that same burr with my finger, you know, on the back side of these switches. And the back side was connected to the 12 volts coming out of this. So anyway, I, um, I continue on and then after a while I get fed up. So I grab some capped on tape, you know, and I wrap that around the back side of those switches and, uh, the problem goes away. So I'm like, okay, it must've just been some solder burrs. So later on in the uh, later on in the day, I had to make a code change to that board. So I go and I I plug in from my Mac over to the uh, to the board, and you know with the USB cable here. And as soon as I touch the the uh, the USB connector there, I see a big spark fly out, and I'm like, what the hell's going on? You know, and I didn't even really think about it even at that point. I'm like, what the, was that static or what was that? You know, I wasn't even paying attention. So I plug it in, I force it in, you know, and my Mac, my, my, by the way, was operating on, on, uh, on battery power. So it wasn't plugged into the wall or anything like that. And my Mac is, has an aluminum body. So I rest my hands down on the computer and I feel a, a freaking shock go through my hands and I'm like what the hell is going on it was the freaking supply here so anyway uh yeah this video is going to be all about this piece of crap power supply that was shocking me all day yesterday so let's uh let's plug her in and uh I'll show you a couple things what's going on here Okay, so first test, obviously, let's just take, check the DC output of the supply. And sure enough, you get a nice, clean 12 volts. So that's not the issue. The issue is, is what is this voltage floating at? You know, um, you would think, you know, this would be a nice, clean, isolated output, something like that. I could tie the ground of this, or the outside of this barrel jack here, the common part of that, that output there, I could tie that right to ground, no big deal, right? Well, let's see what this is floating at with respect to ground. So what I'm gonna do is just hook up, I gotta be kind of careful with this so I don't get another nasty shock. All right, put that like that, oop, almost touched me. And uh, actually, I'm just gonna unplug this thing, I don't trust it. And uh, let's plug uh, the other side in here that over there there we go and what we're gonna do is plug one side of the meter to the outside of that barrel jack and then the other side we're gonna tie to ground okay the actual ground earth ground coming right out of the uh, the wall there and that's what's everything here is referenced to the anti-static mat um, my wrist strap all that stuff so tied right to ground and now let's throw this into AC volts and let's see what we get so there you go we're floating at like 45 volts AC 
from from ground, earth ground, okay? So if my body is touching ground and I touch that, I've just touched 45 volts AC. And I've tested this with, uh, with my actual uh, Keithley uh, per, uh, calibrated uh, benchtop meter. I also tested this with the, uh, the oscilloscope. I'll throw that up right here. I took a snapshot of that. And uh, this is true with both the outside of the barrel jack, the common, and the inside positive terminal as well. So they're floating at the same AC voltage. Now, you know, you might be thinking, well, okay, you know, a lot of isolated supplies might be flapping in the breeze. They're isolated. They're outputs. They could just kind of float around. But as soon as you bring them in to ground, you know, that grounds them out, okay? That creates their reference, their output reference, which would be fine, right? Uh, but not so much because let's actually hook it up an LED to this and let's see if we could actually drive some real current off of that. So here we go. Okay, so now I've got an LED hooked up here. We're going through a 100K ohm resistor. And uh, I've got this LED in backwards. So the, the, the cathode is actually uh, connected uh, uh, to the resistor side because I'm connected to the out par outside part of, oops, the outside part of the barrel jack here. And uh, if you saw in that scope shot, you know, our reference to ground is actually the negative part of the AC waveform. So that's why I've flipped that uh, LED around. We'll plug it in real quick here. Mind you, this is through a 100K ohm resistor, okay? And you should see the LED turn on there. So we're pushing enough current through that 100K through the LED to actually light it up. Okay, so, because, you know, we we're seeing some, like, crazy peaks in that AC waveforms, like up to, um, I think, 180 volts or something like that. So, I mean, this is, like, this has got some serious power that's floating at, you know, so... Uh, let's uh, let's test something else now. Let's actually test the the current going through this uh, uh, from from this outside part of the barrel jack through a 10k ohm resistor to earth ground. Okay, so I've got the equipment hooked up here, and now I've got the outside part of that barrel jack connected to one side of a 10k ohm resistor, and then the other side through the meter to ground, just to see what the current through a 10k could be. So I'll go ahead and plug this in here. We'll take a look. And you can see that that gets up to 6 milliamps AC, which might not seem like a lot, but through a 10K, and I'll unplug that. Oh, yeah, and that is burning hot. In fact, I did this same test off camera with a 100 ohm resistor, and it blew up. <laughs> so uh, anyway, we've got some serious power here. So let's... Let's uh, crack this thing open and see if anything looks obvious. Okay, so we're opening this up, and uh, I don't expect to see anything of high quality whatsoever. Uh, usually, you, when you tear these things apart, it's usually just junk, single-sided PCB. Uh, this is a switch mode power supply, so I'd hope to see a little better quality, but no, it's still all just junk. Single-sided PCB there. Um, looks like it's a pretty standard. Uh, looks like it's a pretty standard uh, uh, power supply configuration there. We've got a heat sink going along the side here for the the switchers, and um, yeah, we've got the isolation barrier. Nope, I'm doing that all off camera. <laughs> We've got the isolation barrier going through here, and uh, you can see we've got the uh, we've got some opto feedback for the primary side. Um, yeah, we could actually look up these part numbers, but I mean, within seconds of opening this up, I could tell you what the problem is. Take a look. Let's see. I can't get any closer than that. Let's see if I can pull this up. Ah, right there. So right here is the ground pin connecting to the main AC input. And even when I shake that, you can see it flapping in the breeze. It's just sitting there, not connected, floating. And was that done on purpose? I don't, I doubt it, but that looks like a problem. All right, well, I fixed up that solder joint, and uh, how did that get there? 
I fixed up that solder joint and uh, retested everything and uh, that was not the problem and uh, you'll see why in a second here because uh, you know if you look at where that ground pin comes in it comes into the board right there and then goes nowhere else so the ground pin has no functionality on this board whatsoever uh, I looked at both the top and bottom side of the board the ground pin comes in mounts right there and that's it not really sure why they didn't just use a cord like this that has line and neutral coming in no ground but uh, whatever. So, you know, when I saw that at first, you know, you see that terrible solder joint there and you think, well, that's got to be the problem. Uh, but it's but it wasn't because I retested everything and I got the same results. But to me, you know, this this the aluminum heat sink that goes across the entire board mounts to both sides into copper. I mean, it's making an electrical connection into the board. That seems like the biggest problem to me. I mean, sometimes you get away with that, depending on what that signal is on both sides. But to me, there's still there's something just not quite right about that. So uh, what I did was I clipped one of the leads going to this heat sink down on the board. You probably can't see it. Um, but I, I went in there and I clipped the mounting stud going to this heat sink there and just to see what just to see what would happen so uh let's go ahead and power this up again and the first thing i want to do is make sure that i didn't break anything in the power supply so let's take a measurement real quick here of the dc voltage okay power that up and there we go. So we still have 12 volts DC, so that's good. Now let's check the reference to ground. So just clip that on right there. I don't really care. I'll go to AC. Actually, I'll go just to be consistent. Okay, now we're looking at the outside of the barrel jack to earth ground. All right, so it's still floating at 42 volts AC. But does that, is it just floating up there with, with no you know, energy to earth ground? Or is, it, or is it like before where I could actually pull some serious current off of that, off of that floating voltage? Uh, let's test it with the LED. Okay, so we're all set up here. I've got the, uh, now the outside part of that barrel jack connected through the 100K through the LED to earth ground. And we're gonna check it with both polarities there too. Okay. Okay, and the LED is not turning on, so that's good. And we'll just go ahead and flip that around real quick. Still not turning on. And I did check it with my oscilloscope. And when there is a load on this, on this, uh, this floating output there, it does zero it to ground. So it actually will match down with earth ground when there's any kind of load. So it doesn't have, it doesn't have the, um, the energy or uh, the capability of actually pushing energy out through that floating uh, voltage. So let's actually prove that out real quick here. I'm gonna terminate that 100K right to ground now. So it's through 100K to ground and I will take my meter here still in AC and take a quick measurement right across that 100k yeah and there you go now we only have 5 volts there 5 volts AC so hardly any energy at all going through so uh, now I would feel safe actually grounding this out to ground yeah there we go no problem and I now feel safe to actually touch this uh, this power supply output. Although I'm not going to. I'm going to throw this thing right in the garbage or destroy it. So, yeah, there we go. We're looking good. And oops, let's test it right to there. And then check the input output there or the, uh, the 12 volts. Yep, everything is still good. So now this power supply can be referenced to ground. 
without pushing current through ground, you know? Just making sure. Before, you know, this is the same situation as before with the USB jack. You know, this was powering the entire project. That outside of the barrel jack was connected to the uh, to the USB connector. And uh, as soon as I plugged my cable in, boom, big spark. So that's the same kind of setup that I'm testing here with ground. Yep, uh, no big deal. I was just checking to make sure I had my ground. Cable still plugged in, but yeah, we're good. All right, so anyway, I know I'm dragging this video on forever, but uh, there you go. So be warned, now, now we know that with this power supply, it was not a manufacturing issue. We have a real design problem here. And I mean, maybe I'm missing something. Maybe that's the way it's supposed to work, but uh, the fact that I'm getting shocked by this power supply. What the hell did I just do? The fact that I'm getting shocked by this power supply uh, scares me. So I'm going to go and destroy this thing and uh, take my loss, whatever this cost me, what, five bucks, I think. Um, and never buy these power supplies again. Or if I do, I'll at least now check to make sure that I don't have... Um, I don't have a floating AC voltage with some power behind it. So anyhow, there is a crazy video about these cheap supplies. And hopefully that helps somebody out there or prevents you from getting shocked. Uh, thanks for watching.